Dean Rousseau is going to make public comment. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Morning. Welcome to our regularly scheduled Board of Supervisors meeting. If you'd please stand and join us in the flag salute uh, led by Supervisor Ishida. Remain standing for a moment of silence. Thank you. Please join me in saluting our flag. Our pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. <clears throat> All right, we'll take up our first item this morning, which is uh, Board of Supervisor Matters, beginning with Supervisor Vanderpool. All right, thank you, Mr. Chair. Just uh, wanted to uh, go over a few items. Hope uh, everybody had a very nice Fourth of July holiday. Um, uh, first of all, uh, just a real quick uh, Summer Night Lights uh, recap for uh, District 2. We've been having very good events so far uh, in the communities of Alpon and Allensworth. Um, they've averaged uh, 170 people per night uh, over the first three nights. Uh, in early March, they've already finished all of their events, but the turnout was actually much better than uh, uh, expected initially, um, and they continue to grow each year. Uh, Pixley did very, very well, and, and in their first uh, event, our most recent event, they had 270 people attend. Um, and in Tipton, they had 170 of, attend their first evening. Um, and Tulare kicks off their Summer Night Lights events uh, this week. So I uh, really do think this is a great program, and I think it's making a difference for people in the unincorporated communities where there are no activities for the youth uh, during the summer, or there are very few. Um, next week, I, I will be having a, a meeting with uh, Self-Help Enterprises to continue the work on a uh, community water project in Mike Ennis' favorite community, and that's Oakeyville, um, or Highland Acres. Um, <laughs> we will be uh, uh, hopefully working towards uh, some sort of solution. The community is uh, stepping up and indicating a desire to create a system and maintain it um, by forming their own uh, mutual water company. Um, and then lastly, uh, we've got a, a San Joaquin Valley Insurance Authority meeting next week. Um, and uh, we have not had the actual numbers presented to us, but so far uh, the projections for the renewal rates actually look uh, a little bit better than uh, the industry trend. So uh, SJVIA is doing very well, and uh, I think it's something we can all look forward to. That's all I have, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Cox. Uh, uh, last week, last uh, couple of weeks, I've been doing interviews for uh, new hires at First Five Commission, and last week we did interview several people and hired uh, Michelle Morrow to be our new executive director of First Five Tulare County. So that was, uh, I think, time well spent. We were able to interview several people and find out that our internal candidate was uh, the best one for the job. Also, I'd like to say something about the Summer Night Lights programs. That uh, even in our the many years that we've been doing this now, I still see. Even reported in newspapers and radio, I still hear Friday night lights, Saturday night lights, all kinds of night lights, but it's summer night lights. And uh, <laughs> I think we're doing very well countywide. I'd like to give a little bit of my time over to Allison Pierce, let her talk about the total attendance. We, we don't have all of the numbers in yet, but it looks, I'd like to have you hear it from her how promising the numbers look for this summer. You have part of this three minutes. Go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> I'll make it quick. Um, the Tony, numbers I I do, <laughs> we have been giving the, been getting the numbers from each community representative. Um, uh, last year we peaked at over 19,000. We stand, we still have the rest of July and a little bit of August and we're at 17,000. Um, Dinuba, Thankfully, um, they had at their last event 6,000, and that was their 4th of July. They combine efforts for their summer night lights, but they've done that every year consistently. But this year was they shifted the venue 
and so the attendance was really um, large this year. Uh, but they themselves have experienced growth across the board, 400, 600, 700 at successive events. So everyone's doing really well. The report's coming back. And all the community members appreciate it, not only the attendees, but the partners. So some of the churches, the public service organizations, they're very appreciative and they're excited about the rest of the year. Thanks. So I'm just trying to think that means we're well on track to double our numbers uh, in attendance for the Summer Night Lights programs this year. Just wanted to uh, let Allison also know how much we appreciate her hard work uh, because this would, program would not happen without her efforts and bringing all of the committees and the different communities together. That's all I have. Very good. Supervisor Sheedy. Supervisor Vanderpool brought up an item about the uh, San Joaquin Valley <coughs> Insurance Organization we belong to, and I received some interesting statistics. Is that when we started uh, our JPA with Fresno, we had about 12. 100 employees that were initially uh, in the program and the program has it has expanded to we have almost 11,000 employees under the program because this program is much bigger than just the two counties it's expanded so much and on our board uh, Supervisor Vanderpool, Worthley and Ennis serve as representing Tulare County. Tomorrow I have a meeting tomorrow morning on Temperance Flat, Fresno. Apparently there's a group that uh, <clears throat> is trying to get Fresno County involved in, in being the participant in applying for Prop 1 funds. And tomorrow evening, uh, there's a meeting uh, update on the San Joaquin Restoration Project, which I'll be attending. On Thursday, I've called a meeting of the Friant Water Users, and we're going to meet and see if we are going to take a, a role in Prop 1 funds to see if Tampa's Flat really fits into the program of the Fry and Water Users. <clears throat> there are a lot of questions that aren't answered and because the California State Water uh, Commission is now putting together the requirements for, for receiving those funds, uh, we all need to get together to see if we are going to apply. <coughs> Uh, for Prop 1 funds for Temperance Flat. And that's all I have. Thank you. Supervisor Ennis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> yeah, this last week I, uh, I went uh, to the up, Upper Thule area and was up there at uh, Camp Nelson on Saturday for their, their big fundraiser for their volunteer fire department. Uh, continue to see lots of trees uh, dying, lots of dead trees, and we've fortunately been very... Very lucky so far. We've had several thunderstorms go through up there and spurred some small fires. I think the biggest one was 17 acres. But all it takes is the right time, and you get some wind and get that fire up in that canopy, and who knows where it's going to go. So uh, it's not just in one area. There are dead trees everywhere. Over 12 million dead trees or dying trees in our Sierra Mountains right now. So it's a real uh, tinderbox just waiting to explode. And... Uh, Hopefully, we're, we're going to get through this season, but if we don't, we're going to have some catastrophic fires. Uh, yesterday, I was at uh, the Success Dam en Enlargement Remediation Meeting, uh, and we are still working towards getting the enlargement for Lake Success moving forward to go from 82.5 to 110,000 acre feet. On Wednesday, uh, there will be a group going to Sacramento to talk to the Corps, uh, Dick Schaefer, Dan Vink, David DeGroth, uh, Walter Bricker, and Steve Drumright will be going up there to work with Mr. Reed and the, the colonel that's now in charge and see if we can't move this project forward. We need to find out if there's going to be stipulations, whether it be widening the spillway due to overtopping issue or what it's going to take to make this project go forward. It was 2003 when it was all set to go. The groundbreaking ceremony was held, and then it was put on hold. So... You can see this has been an ongoing uh, situation and millions of dollars been spent on studying a dam, which really, they come to find out, is still pretty stable. So uh, that's all I have. Thank you. Last um, uh, Wednesday, there was a East Portville Water Crisis uh, Water Summit uh, hosted by uh, Devin Mathis, uh, our assemblyman. Uh, well attended. There were probably about 40 to 50 people there, uh, uh, various stakeholders, including many high-level uh, state uh, agency people, 
looking for solutions, uh, primarily directed at East Porterville, but of course at uh, information also kind of spread out around other parts of the county. But uh, the magnitude of the problem in East Porterville has been recognized for some time as being very difficult because of the size of the area uh, with no water, existing water system. Every lot uh, has its own septic system and its own well. And in many cases, of course, our, we've had uh, the, the, the vast majority of failed wells uh, have been in East Porterville uh, because of the lack of water in the, in the Thule River for these last number of years. So, um, you know, we, we feel like we're in good shape to, uh, for the, the drilling of a single well that will generate sufficient water to be able to provide the water to, to um, put in the tanks that have been installed and more that are needed in that, in that community. Uh, this has become a huge issue. It's not just a matter of putting in tanks. It's finding the water to fill those tanks. Uh, and more and more, we're having difficulty acquiring water because everybody's trying to husband their resources, and, they're, they're, and it's, uh, the scarcity is such that they're nervous about uh, sharing what water they have for fear that it will affect their own local residents. And so this, this well would provide that water and in addition would provide sufficient water, we think, to hook up about 100 households uh, that are adjacent to existing city water uh, lines. Uh, and that, that is a critical uh, aspect, too, again, of sort of making a beginning to make an improvement in that, in that community. Uh, the, uh, the, the needs are such that they expect they actually need five wells uh, drilled to supply water for all of that community. And, of course, it's not just the wells. It would then be a delivery system. And so uh, it gives you an idea of the magnitude of the problem there. It's, it's really quite extensive. I want to th give our thanks to uh, Assemblyman Mathis for uh, having this event and becoming, you know, very actively engaged in trying to find uh, solutions to, to this very major problem. Of course, the biggest solution would be a whole lot of rain this coming winter and snow. And let's hope that that happens. Um, uh, a matter brought up by Supervisor Ennis about the timber. We have a matter on our consent calendar this morning. I wasn't going to bring it up, but I think I will now because he mentioned it. I, too, had to make a kind of a flying rush up to it. We have a little cabin up above Pinehurst uh, in the Sequoia National Forest, and I was shocked. Uh, I was, I've been shocked before at the amount of dead timber, but yeah, shocked anew at the new development of dead timber. Uh, what we're seeing now are on the, on the tops of the, the ridges where, as you would expect, the, there's the least amount of water. Uh, trees, large old-growth trees, just dead by the hundreds, and, uh, and a number of trees... Uh, the first sign of, of, of a problem is when you, in a distance, see uh, the, the kind of green of, t of the trees you're used to being all of a sudden they're kind of a pale color. That's a tree that's already dead and it's in stages of dying, and, and there are many, many of those trees that are now becoming visible, and it's going to get worse this summer. So uh, we have a letter going. Uh, part of our agenda this morning is to send a letter to the governor's office. Uh, actually, it's going to be to the California Natural Resources Agency. Under federal law, there is a a categorical exclusion which uh, reduces this significantly the amount of environmental work and so forth that needs to be done on national forest and it allows for uh, 3,000 acre up to 3,000 acres of, of, of land and there's no limit in terms of you could have 3,000 acres designated in you know several of those in, in a single watershed and it certainly fits this situation that we have here now which is one caused by drought and uh, the beetle infestation uh, that would allow the Forest Service to go forward, but we have to have a designation from the governor's office in order to do that. Currently, we have none. And so when we were in Sacramento last, we made this one of our priorities to try to get that accomplished. Uh, we were advised that the governor's office was looking at that, and we think the time for looking is well past. It's time to make the designation, and, and then, the, then we have to apply the pressure of the Forest Service to actually do something because this gives them the authority but then they have to actually do something, and that's another matter altogether. But this is the first step. So we will continue. And I just talked to uh, Debbie Vaughn. Whatever we need to do as a super board of supervisors and a, me as an individual and as a chair, we need to go to Sacramento and, and we certainly you know, do whatever we can to, to expedite this process. Uh, we're willing to do that because this is a very, very serious problem. All right, that will conclude our uh, supervisor's comments. And we'll move now to the public comments section of our meeting. Anyone wishing to address the board on matters which are within our jurisdiction but are not on today's agenda are invited to come forward and give us uh, their public comment. I do have uh, a public comment form filled out, a little unusual, uh, because it's filled out by our, our CAO, Gene Rousseau. <laughs> so, Mr. Rousseau, you have the, you have the floor. Three yeah, minutes. Thank, thank you, Chairman. Gene Rousseau, CAO. 
Um, this is just an announcement that we, uh, we've automated our boards, commissions, and committees. Uh, we put it on our website, so applications for advisory boards, commissions, and committees uh, can now be submitted online. Uh, online application is user-friendly. Application process will be more streamlined. Um, this is all written by IT, so. Uh, <laughs> my, um, online access uh, to applications increases county transparency, which is important to our office. And to apply, go to the uh, clerk of the board website, and um, and we invite you to participate in the process. So, I want to thank IT publicly for doing a great job and bringing this forward. Thank you. Thank you. Any other uh, public comment from the members present today? Uh, seeing no one, we will close the public comment period. Bring it back to. Uh, yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Please give us your uh, name and address. My name is Bill Ryland. I'm actually an attorney. I'm representing my client, Chuck Charles Keel, here um, or here on his behalf. Charles, what's your address? 27351 Avenue 196, Strathmore, California. And we are here to request the board's assistance in inquiring into and hopefully helping us resolve an issue with some uh, what we claim are um, improperly and, and unfairly assessed uh, property taxes on uh, several parcels of pro real property. Um, there was some property that was, uh, my client's mother owned property in a trust that was held back in 2003. There was some lot lineage. I'm just trying to give you a real brief summary of the history of the properties. There was a uh, lot line adjustment done back in 2003. In the process of that, it took several years before the taxes were, were reassessed on the new property, ta on the new, uh, the new division of the property. In the meanwhile, my client's mother was uh, suffering from dementia and was legally incompetent, but she ended up transferring the property in 2005 to Mr. Keel's business. That transfer triggered a reassessment of the properties. However, in 2009, once that transfer was discovered, the transfers of the property were rescinded and it was returned back to the trust of my client's mother. Um, when it, once the properties were, once the transfers were rescinded, the property taxes were supposed to have been returned to the base values. However, there's a period of time between 2006 and 2008 where the um, properties were assessed at a much higher rate when, and when once the uh, transfers were rescinded, all of those property taxes should have been returned back to the base value. However, as it stands now, just kind of cut, cut forward to it, as it stands now, there's a hundred and a little over 130,000 currently owed on the property, and we're coming up on the deadline to get those paid before there's any uh, foreclosure or default sale. And I, like I, I would like to just interrupt you a little bit. Uh, this is you know, the question. The, the initial thing is within our jurisdiction, and actually, we have no jurisdiction over this issue. Uh, this is the assessor's appeal board issue, and the assessor's office. Uh, in the event that that you have the ability to file an appeal of a decision from that board to this to this board of supervisors. Uh, but we really have no jurisdiction over this particular issue. It would be something you would really need to take up with the assessor's office and the assessor's appeal board, and your client's shaking his head, which tells me he's maybe already done that. I don't know. But we tried we, this. But we, we, have no, we have no authority over this. Matter. They told us to come to you. <laughs> so we're, I don't know why they would tell you that. We have nothing to do with assessments or, or how they're said, or that's all done by the independently elected assessor's office and his staff, and we have no, we have no authority over it. The only authority we have is through... An appeal process, and even that is very limited because the statutes are what they are, and they can be very draconian in terms of deadlines and dates and so forth. And if you miss those dates, then we're told we have no jurisdiction. It's not a court of equity here; it's just a court of law. Well, when we tried to do that, they, would get the, they gave us they sent the money back. They wouldn't do this. This is I, have you have you filed an appeal with the assessment appeals board? No, they told us we had to start. This, this is the second step, and then the no, appeals board. No, we, uh, this, the, the, the appeals board is where you need to go. I mean, because if you can't work out something with the staff, then your next step is to file an, an assessment. Uh, uh, appeals, uh, seal, I'm sorry, the assessment appeals board. They're the ones that actually have a hearing on these issues and render a decision. Okay, so we'll get back with the assessor's office. All right. The appeals board. Okay. Once that's done, then then the there board is has a, limited a, jurisdiction there's a, over. There's a provision for appeal, but you need to look very carefully at the statutes because uh, it, it's almost an appeal without any kind of. Again, we don't have any juris. We have no authority to, to change from the law. If we found they made an error, a, law, a legal error, we can we can rectify that on appeal. But if the if it's not a legal error, 
we're very limited in what we can do as a board. It's definitely a legal error, so. Okay. All right. Thank you for your time. You're very welcome. Anyone else wishing to address us this morning? All right. Seeing none, we will close the public comment period, and we will take up the uh, consent calendar. Uh, I have nothing. I've been notified of nothing needing, needing to come off, uh, uh, handled separately. Do any of the members have items they wish to handle separately? This Mr. Chair, I'd like, I have one question on item 20. It doesn't need to be pulled. If I can ask staff a question on item 20, the uh, uh, Peter Malik Park in Goshen. Uh, is there someone that's going to address this matter? Coin, I see you're getting up. My question's an easy one. Is this the Basin Park or is it the park adjacent to the new subdivision? Good morning. It's that. It's next to the housing project. It's not the Basin no, Park. No, Thank you. Sir. That's all I have. Okay. Supervisor I, I do have a uh, question, and then I think there's one item that uh, I, I had talked to Gene about, and he said that it was set for closed session. We might want to go to closed session on that. Is uh, Item 11, and that's related to the Balch Park uh, project. I'd like to uh, uh, visit with council uh, regarding that item. And then item 16, I do have a question for uh, staff that's related to the uh, Deer Creek Bridge project. Um, I know the, uh, uh, the request from staff is to uh, rebid the project. Um, wh what is the delay that's going to be caused by uh, doing so? Okay. Very good. Uh, Mike Spada, RMA. Uh, under the existing schedule, the bridge was slated to be constructed or completed in December uh, 2015. If we re-advertise the bids, the schedule is uh, uh, set forth for April. So it's only a few months delay. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Okay, I entertain a motion. For oh, I'm sorry. We need to do we need to go to closed session. We need to oh, go to closed session on that one. Item 11. I thought we were just we'll go into closed session. Mr. Mr. Chair, while we're going into closed session, could we also discuss our uh, public hearing today, item number three in closed session? Yes, we can do that. Thank you. The uh, board is back in session after taking up some closed session items, and uh, we are now back to our consent calendar. And um, I will entertain. I see now, Mr. Vanderpool. Yeah. Do you want to pull one item and handle it separately? Mr. Chair, I, I would like to uh, pull. Um, let's see. It was item 16, and we can uh, okay. handle that separately. That would be okay. Great. So, and, and if there are no further comments or questions by members of the public. Uh, I would move for approval of the balance of the consent calendar. Second. Any, any uh, public comment on the consent calendar? <coughs> Seeing none, would you please? We have a motion by Supervisor Vanderpool, seconded by Supervisor Ennis. Please cast your votes. Votes are unanimous. We'll take up item 16 this time. Uh, item 16, I, I know that there were some uh, irregularities here and that the project is going to be rebid, but uh, I do not uh, agree with the delay that's going to be caused by rebidding this project, and I would like to see it done sooner, but. Uh, that's my point. Okay. Is there a motion to approve? Move for approval. Second. Motion by Supervisor Ennis, seconded by Supervisor Cox. Please cast your votes. <clears throat> votes are four to one. Supervisor uh, in favor. Motion passes. Supervisor Vanderpool being in the objection. Uh, we'll now take up our uh, our timed item, which is an appeal. Uh, item number two, three, uh, public hearing. Request the resource management agency to deny the appeal filed by Houston Wells of Glen Wells Construction Company, Inc., and affirm the Planning Commission's approval of special use permit. Good morning, Mr. Washington. Good morning, Chairman, Board Members, County Council, and CAO. Mike Washington, Clare County RMA.
Good morning. Today we have an appeal of uh, permit number PSP 14041 for an asphalt uh, batch plant in Goshen. Just to give you a little bit of a project background. Excuse me, uh, Mr. Walsh. I mean, Mr. Walsh, uh, let me, let me, I have a, I, I have a script. I've Very good. Read. Let me read that. It'll maybe take away some of the things you were going to say and, uh, and then we'll set the stage. This is a hearing to consider the appeal related to the package construction special use permit PSP 14-041. That permit was approved by the Planning Commission at its May 27th meeting. This hearing is held, being held on July 7, 2015 at uh, 10 minutes to 10 a.m. at uh, 2800 South Mooney Boulevard, Visalia, California, and is at the request of Houston Wells of Glen Wells Construction Company, Inc. The hearing is open to the public. However, if any member of the public disrupts the hearing, he or she will be asked to leave. The board shall hear all pertinent evidence offered by all interested persons. The technical rules of evidence shall not be applicable to the hearing, although the board reserves the right to limit evidence to the issuance of this uh, special use permit. Mr. Wells, you have the right to call and, and examine witnesses, to introduce exhibits, to ask any questions of RMA staff or any witnesses they call, to impeach any witness, and to rebut the evidence against you. Any exhibits offered should be given to the clerk who sits at the front. Um, all persons giving evidence are deemed to be testifying under oath. The parties shall remain civil to each other and any witnesses at all times. RMA staff will give a presentation on this project first, which, which will be going next. Mr. Wells, you will then make your own presentation, present your own evidence, including the calling of any witnesses. We will then allow for the response by staff and a final response by you, Mr. Wells, at the conclusion of both parties' presentations. We will open this hearing up to public comment. Uh, so I'm asked to have representatives identify themselves. I see Mr. Wells is present in the, in the front, um, and uh, he's, the, he's the applicant, I believe, the appellant. Um, do we have any questions before we begin this process? Okay. So uh, we will begin then with a staff report. Thank you. Um, the, the applicant, Papich Construction, is currently operating an asphalt batch plant under a temporary use permit. Uh, the Planning Commission on May 27th approved a permanent special use permit for the uh, PSP 1401 to allow the following. Uh, to permanently uh, make a permanent the establishment of the uh, asphalt batch plant on the existing site to expand the operation from the current 3,700 tons to 8,000 tons per day and to allow on-site retail and commercial sales of material. Just go over a few of the, the, the features of this particular project. Uh, the applicant has voluntarily agreed to the following community benefits based on um, the potential impacts to the community and the roads. Uh, these are in addition to the standard conditions of approval and the mitigation measures required by CEQA. Uh, basically, there's improvements to Road 64, to complete streets programs, uh, an annual maintenance fee, aesthetic improvements, and a voluntary ag easement. Road 64, um, it was determined through the traffic impact study that, that the uh, applicant, his proportionate share of, uh, of that road is 77%. Therefore, uh, when they construct the uh, Road 64, their, uh, their, their share costs would be about $731,000 of the estimated $950,000 to construct. The road is from uh, it's, it's the construction of, of Road 64 from Avenue 298 on the south of this uh, south part of that road up to three, Avenue 304. <clears throat> this is part in, in conjunction with uh, the Betty Drive uh, extension of 64 as part of the interchange will connect to down to where 304 is. So this is the, the, the completing of that. Uh, this will be delivered uh, within one year of the Betty Drive interchange or upon the closing of the 304 uh, on and off ramps, or by January 1st of 2019, whichever comes first. Also, uh, the applicant has, uh, uh, has chosen to make some improvements for the bike routes to, for safe travel on, on, on roads that, that uh, improve the, uh, uh, the safety of, uh, of bicyclists. I'll, I'll click to the next uh, slide. It shows coming what these routes are. Basically, uh, bike route one is, the, is, is in the green, starting at the lower end. It's the extension of the, uh, the class one bike path along Goshen uh, Avenue that's in the city of Visalia. This would extend the, the class one bike path uh, to, uh, to Camp Road. 
and then it would go up Camp Road, cross 304, and then up, uh, up 72, up to Betty Riggin, and then across uh, over to the west side of the highway. Uh, it's mostly striping on the, uh, it's, a class, it's class one along Goshen, and then it's uh, class two the rest of the remainder of the way, or class three the rest of the way, which is just signage and some painting of the bicycle uh, uh, in the road. Fla uh, the second bike route is, is uh, 304 up Effie Drive and across uh, 30, uh, 308, and then over the pedestrian uh, crossing there. And that, there'll be some construction, some widening along 308, but that's a class two route, which is basically a painted stripe uh, line. And then there's some street lighting potential over the uh, overpass uh, of the rail along Betty Drive, as well as uh, paving the parking lot on the retention park basin there. In accordance with uh, uh, the ongoing maintenance for the impacts that the trucks will have on the road, there is a eight and a, um, eight and a uh, eight point three cent uh, per ton aggregate uh, fee, which could at the very maximum production levels could be close to a quarter million dollars a year. There's aesthetic improvements uh, along um, landscaping along 198, and that includes a 10-foot mound with a fence on top, trees and shrubs uh, along the, the, the mound for beautification, and it's, it's scheduled for a five-year grow out to maturity. This site plan here shows um, Play with something I just learned about this. It shows the um, along here will be uh, landscaping trees, and this along the 198. So it's it's, it's hiding the uh, the effect, the view shed of the uh, project from um, 198, and then along Avenue or Road 68 here. There's also going to be a line of landscape here to, to the, the shed. Voluntary ag easement as well. They're placing a temporary easement on the adjacent 15.96 acres. The applicant may cease the temporary uh, easement so long as uh, a permanent 32-acre easement is put in place. So in, in case they choose to do some other uses on that land, then at that point in time, they could do that, but they would have to find another suitable uh, area that would cover all of that into an... Uh, and that's a permanent easement. And that would be a permanent at that point. Response to comments uh, in the Houston's, uh, Houston Wells letter, uh, number one uh, comment was, there were no notices received by any of the local businesses or the school that a hearing on this proposal for a permanent site was, was being held. All legal notice requirements for CEQA were, were, were met. There was uh, all property owners within 300 feet of the project received uh, uh, notice as well as publishing uh, in, in the Visalia Times Delta, which is a general circulation newspaper for the County of Tulare on April 29th. <clears throat> so all of the legal requirements for noticing uh, were complete. Amount of traffic of approximately 864 trucks and trailer loads on a rural road will overtax it, not to mention the effect of the businesses along Road 68. Well, there must be a little bit of confusion that the, the trips are actually 464 according to the uh, ERA. Um, so it's not 860, so it's over 400 trips less than what was claimed in that letter. Uh, the impacts to Road 68 are well documented and modeled in the current and future conditions, and in no case do they exceed any CEQA uh, thresholds. The applicant has agreed to construct improvements along Road 64 from Avenue 298 uh, up to Avenue 304, as Road 68 will be shut down to through traffic in the near future with the Betty Drive uh, interchange. So the, the Road 68 is really a temporary route until 64 is built out. At that time, the truck traffics will be going up 64. It'll be avoiding the impacts that we're talking about, for the temporary impacts, uh, until that gets completed. We were assured this site was only a temporary location for a specific road construction project. Um, there was no representation that the applicant would, would not apply or was there any way restricted from applying for a special use permit. Um, in November of 2013, there had been some, a working group uh, regarding public work staging area permits and the conclusion of that was that um, administrative uses would no longer be used and applicants should apply for permanent uh, for, special use permits, which is, in this case, is what Papage had done. 
What effects are of the asphalt plant on nearby crops and farmland? Well, impacts to agriculture were, were analyzed in section 3.2 of the EIR. There's a right to farm notice included. Uh, the voluntary uh, easement uh, mitigates any potential uh, um, conversion of ag land. Uh, the, the project does not encourage uh, further um, conversion and the proposed project will not reduce the viability of the surrounding farmland. All the other asphalt plants in Tulare County are located at the material source which cuts down additional wear and tear on the roadways. Uh, we are, why are we allowing this plant to have a permanent site where they have to haul in their material? Well, the Tulare County Zoning Ordinance does not limit the location of asphalt batch plants to their material source. As over time, material sources may change uh, as, as, as sources run out and others come, up, come available. Uh, the alternative analysis in the EIR concluded that after full, substantial, and deliberate analysis, the project site remains the preferred alternative. I'd just like to mention a couple other things for consideration. That uh, there was a implied that the, the, the school, the Goshen School, didn't know anything about this. The Goshen Elementary and Visalia Unified District were consulted in the preparation of the traffic impact study. They talked to them about traffic and all that, so they were consulted in, in, in that process. Uh, again, I want to uh, mention that Road 68 is only the temporary until the Betty Drive interchange is complete. And with that, the, there will be a realignment and the build out of 64, which will be to the west of the community and avoid these types of impacts in the future. Um, I just, th this, this site here, showing you, here, the, the project site is right down here. The, the white line is 68, where we're, they're going to be temporarily coming up here, getting on at 304, or getting up here to Betty Drive. Or they head south, or they come over here and they get down to 198 to um, go east. In the future, the red line is where the truck route will become. Once, once Betty Drive uh, interchange gets done, 64 is going to be realigned as part of that project out here to the west, circle down, and it tails off and ends here. The applicant is going to construct from here, build out the road down to here, and complete that part of 64. Therefore, the trucks, when they come out, once this is built out, will be going west and up and staying on 64, thus avoiding any impacts to the, the community of Goshen in that area. And with that, uh, that ends the uh, staff's presentation, and I take it back to the chairman. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any questions of staff? Uh, one, one quick question. Fox. Back on slide five, all the way back, when talking about the uh, Fleet Street's bicycling programs. Mm -hmm. In, on the front page of our staff report, it says estimated cost $150,000. If you go to your slide five, it shows four numbers that total probably $500,000. Which is it? These numbers, well, there, there's consideration uh, on the first two, the bike, bike routes, that's part of it for sure and, and pretty in there. And the parking lot improvement is going to be a deferred uh, to long term. The street lighting was kind of optional because we're looking at how that project is going to be built out. Because some of this stuff won't be able to happen until the, the construction of the interchange. Whether we can find other alternative ways for the lighting and, and, and those things as part of that project, then that would mitigate and reduce some of the, some of these uh, expenses. But the bike routes themselves are, are part of this. Meeting. So on slide five, where you show <coughs> bike route one and two, parking lot and street lighting, those are not costs that are being paid for through this project? One and two most certainly are, and three as well, the parking lot. The street lighting is something that we investigate further. They, they had put out that they would agree to do this, but we also, on our end, we're saying we're looking for other alternative funding for this. As far as Road 64 as well, we're looking for grants and other opportunities to offset the overall expense. You know, so, so the staff report that says total community, or these community enhancements valued at an estimated 150000 that's not the 150,000. Not correct. It's about 400,000 less the lights. I'm just talking about well, our, okay, our, I, our. I'm talking about our printed staff report. It says those items are 150,000 dollars. Okay, they, these these should be the correct numbers. So the ones on slide five are the correct numbers. Okay, thank you. I did have a question. I know in the staff report it, it indicated that there was a way for the county to expedite the construction of the road improvements by putting money into an escrow account. 
uh, and I wasn't clear, is that something that, I mean, not that we would do it, but if we did it tomorrow, that would start the process, or are we still saying it was, it's tied back it's, it's, to the other, the, the fact we're looking at the uh, Betty Drive interchange? It's tied to that because the road's going to connect into that, so. And it wouldn't be a road to connect into right. if they did otherwise. Okay. Exactly. All right, thank you. Any other questions? Mr. Wells, uh, it's your chance, and then when after you've conducted, completed your, your, your appeal presentation, and then we'll open the public. Everybody has a, a hard copy of this. It's been given to us. And Mr. Wells, if you could you get close use to the that microphone, get close to the microphone, please. Thank you. <clears throat> kind of old school. I grew up where they didn't have microphones. <laughs> <laughs> you just had to speak up. Anyway. Uh, <clears throat> I get back to the microphone. My name is Houston Wells. I'm president of Glen Wells Construction Company. My family has owned commercial property in the town of Goshen since 1950 and have considered ourselves good neighbors to the surrounding communities and businesses. We've been actively donating our time and resources for the betterment of the community, such as churches and, and uh, parking lots at the school. And I'm here today to demonstrate a special use permit number PSP 14-041 would be a uh, it would be a deter deterrent, not an asset detriment, and not an asset to our community. The permit has been presented. It would be no harm and undue consequences to the community of Goshen or the county roads. <clears throat> No notices to the local businesses in the school. Well, uh, as I said, RMA said 300 feet, so that, that didn't reach them. However, I feel that was important through the ERA that they, they uh, weren't counted in because when they counted the traffic, it was during the summertime, and that's in the environmental report. The project related traffic on county roads at over tax. You have to look at what's coming and what's going. You, you've got not only trucks delivering, you've got trucks leaving to get another load, you've got trucks picking up loads. And this is, on, this is not to count the oil trucks that are going in or the, uh, you'd say the rubble trucks for their uh, wrap system coming in. None of that is accounted for in the ERA. Okay, so we have assurances as made that there was a temporary location, and uh, I believe back in 2012, uh, they did make that uh, note that it was only temporary, not to worry. The unknown effects of the asphalt plant on the nearby crops and farmland, if you've ever been to an asphalt plant, you don't see a lot of birds, you don't see a lot of vegetation around there. It's just the particulates get on the leaves and there is, it is a detriment to the farming. As far as the location of the project, it's not a material source. We have four plants that have material sources they sit on, that cuts down your traffic, that also uh, you don't have that extra drive because part of that is a going to be a problem. Some of it would be going maybe overlapping and they didn't have to go as far. Okay, um, we already touched on the 300 feet, but the amount of traffic that's created by the uh, business owners and residents, there are residents there, there are schools there, and the truck routes uh, everything should have been notified. Uh, when you look at the projected related traffic on the county roads that it overtaxes, and you can see that the math is uh, totally wrong for what RMA has, what is real true. We're basing this on facts and not by some mythology. It's 
true facts about the 8,000 tons. Uh, what if they choose to go over the 200 days? Because they're asking for 24-7. And they're falling short on their loads. As far as uh, we can calculate, and math doesn't lie. Okay, also on the draft report, it shows that there's 500,000 tons per year. Uh, well, when you do the math again, there's uh, going to be around 1,600,000 tons per year. Again, the aggregate source, uh, as far as naming it, or the materials itself, was uh, only named at Rossi Rock. And in the ERR, it does not name the other source, which we know that there's 40%, at least, that are coming from uh, CMAX up at Lemon Cove. And that is not included in the ERR or calculated by the San Joaquin Air Board on the effects of what uh, we're going to receive. Okay, as far as the comments, uh, talking with them, uh, on their letter dated the 24th, uh, I want you guys to pay particular uh, attention to that because some of the reports were not given to them to calculate them, uh, what the particulates and what the other uh, effects are going to be. Again, San Joaquin Air Board is calculating 47,000 trucks per year. RMA is only calculating 11,000 trucks. I don't know why, uh, but I feel that RMA is a ignoring the fact that San Joaquin Air Board is counting the trucks getting, coming and going. Again, there's a big discrepancy. And I think that the, I think that the ERR is uh, full of uh, pitfalls. Okay, Caltrans recommendations for no trucks during peak periods. They uh, address that in their letter, five to uh, Staging five to ten, was that ten minutes? Yeah. Glasses are off. Uh, anyway, uh, the recommendation is there by Caltrans, and also it's there uh, for the uh, San Joaquin Air Pollution Board to point the RMA in the proper direction. And uh, it is not taking under, under advisement. They're continuing to try to push that uh, amount of trucks down that road. By the way, I did the calculations, and it's about a, a one truck per minute if you uh, want to go to the peak. Um, well, we didn't hit on the uh, who's going to be doing the monitoring, but uh, the monitoring is, is definitely a big factor. We have not seen any monitoring uh, on the temporary permit, and we have uh, yet to see any future monitoring that the county is going to do to this project. And as far as enforcement, they're just going to run amok unless we get accountable and uh, accountability. Uh, it's just a joke to even make the rules because rules without consequences aren't rules at all. Okay, the assurance that was made, if you see up there, you can read down through all that uh, all those dates and find that the applications, we really accommodated them and allowed them in because technically they shouldn't have even been there to start with. But they had to rewrite the rules and the county had to pass that. Uh, what's that? What page is that? That's the, um, about the appeal. I see better here than there. Okay, anyway, 
there's a meeting that, and we'll refresh your memory on this, June 25th, 2013, that uh, the board had questioned Mr. Pappage, uh, both uh, Pappage and the board interacted in a field of questions. And one of the questions was, of course, that uh, are you going to sell, uh, are you advertising outside? And the answer was, I assure you, there's no retail sales other than uh, what we have sold to ourselves. Well, that turned out to be wrong because they're bidding on uh, RMA material sources. And we also, in 2013, and named that uh, as a state plant. And in 2015, recently, that plant is named as the source for the bid on the materials for the rock and the sand and also the asphalt, coal mix and hot mix. And the RMA uh, <coughs> evidently didn't catch that either, that they had continued to violate that temporary permit as far as not advertising or doing any public works other than that road on 99. I believe Mr. Worthy had a concern about that too, and uh, and they reassured him that there was nothing there. And we have proof that they continue to advertise on the internet, and they continue to get away with it. Oops, sorry. The original special use permit underlined that Sierra Pacific materials to allow a temporary public work staging area for a portable asphalt plant. Doesn't say anything about uh, crushers or anything like that. And again, that's to the surprise of the Air Board that uh, there's additional equipment there that are not included in that uh, permit. Well, we have more letters to the customers showing the asphalt plan is ready for business through uh, Sierra Pacific. Another violation. We have a copy of the bids in uh, 2015 in red highlighting that uh, it's a certified uh, commercial plant in Goshen. We have the internet, which still has more advertising. And it's known that Pappy's plant in Goshen and already supplied materials on the cart mill project. We're in the process of uh, getting a copy of those tickets through the Freedom of Information Act. The material was uh, like a class two sub base. And, and due to the short time frame allowed, the copies are not available. Let's go to the unknown effects of the asphalt plan on a nearby crop and farmland. Like I said, you don't have any birds around the asphalt plant. You don't see any vegetation, per se, thriving. These are plants that produce fumes and particulates that is not very environmental friendly to our health or to the plants or anything around it. I know because I have had asphalt plants. There again, this shows an aerial view of the additional equipment, and this was not included uh, through the uh, ERA. All the units shown are necessary for that operation. That plant needed to be included in the admissions calculations, which it was not. And again, the location of the project is not at the material source. Uh, stating and looking at back, uh, that Rossi Rock did not provide enough space to accommodate. An aerial view of Rossi Rock does show that there is room for an asphalt plant in Rossi. The other thing is that when we go back to 
uh, who's going to monitor this. Uh, Tulare County Planning is going to monitor it, but we still haven't seen any enforcement. The back part explaining all the areas that we were at, uh, explaining how, why they couldn't get there. Uh, I talked to Kalia River Rock. They said it, uh, that wasn't true about an environmentally sensitive area. They were just merely asking to run their asphalt plant there or lease their plant. And Doug Reynolds, the manager, said no not let them do that. The other interesting part is they, they approached the city of Isaiah, And uh, the city of Isaiah, uh, they were met with great opposition, as you can see. And there wasn't anything mentioned or put on that that they went to that area. So that's another interesting point that uh, wasn't included. Well, we're getting to the conclusion and the California, the ASEQA section 15.15.1, and it's uh, the ERA should be prepared with a significant degree of analysts and provide decision makers with information, enable them to make decisions, intelligently make account of environmental consequences, an evaluation of environmentally effects proposed projects need not be exhausted, but the sufficiency of the environmental impact report is to be reviewed into the light and what is a reasonable, feasible. Disagreement among experts do not make the ERA inadequate, but the ERA is summarized. The main points of disagreement Courts have to look not for perfection, but for adequacy, completeness, and good faith effort at full disclosure. And full disclosure means their material sources and also their sites where they tried to get in. These were not; these were covered up. Okay, the other uh, CEQA section, fifteen oh twenty one refers to the duty to minimize the environmental damage and balance completing a public objective. A public agency should not approve a project as proposed if there is feasible alternatives, which feasible alternatives to me mean go back to the rock source and you won't have the traffic and you won't have the liability. On mitigation measures available with sub a substantially lessen any significant effects in a project would be on the environment. Based on the information today, as well as above, a sequence sections, a special use permit should not be approved at all. And in conclusion, in short, um, I don't want Goshen to be a dumping ground because I work there for many years, and I still feel it's about the money that the county will receive. But if you really look at what they're going to receive, it's not nearly what Babbage is going to receive because that plan is already up for sale, and it's before we can e you can even put permits on it. There's a number on that plant for sale. Several big companies have already approached and been entertaining the buy of this plant. Once it's permitted, it becomes eight to ten million dollars. If it's not permitted, it doesn't become anything. And I think the county is getting the short end of the stick. We're getting a carrot, and we're getting the wear, we're getting the wear and tear. And to say on the ERA that the wear and tear on those roads is insignificant is like saying. There shouldn't be any wear and tear on any of the county roads because we've got a lot of traffic and that's insignificant. Tell that to my tires, my shoes. Everything wears out. And I think we're just going to beat our other roads to death. Again, we can save ourselves a lot of problems by just going back to the rock source. And I, and I appreciate your time. And 
I want you to fully look at this and you'll see that there's no other way but to uh, deny it. And I thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Wells. Uh, this is, at this time, we uh, allow our staff to uh, respond to your, your statements, Mr. Wells, and then we'll give you an opportunity to finish up uh, and then we'll open the public hearing. I, I just have a couple comments. Um, as far as public noticing, for this hearing today, which is the same subject matter, uh, the plant, every property owner along Road 68 from the plant all the way to Betty Drive was notified for this hearing today. So they've got notice here as well. Um, as far as airboard permitting, all of the, all, all of the, uh, the equipment on use at the site have been, has been permitted through the airboard. There's no violations of the airboard. Uh, as far as material source, I know that Mr. Wells keeps talking about the, the plant has to be at the material source. However, there is no regulations or ordinances that require that. Um, as far as alternatives, a number of alternative sites were analyzed in the EIR. City of Visalia and, and another site were not part of that. They independently continued to look because they did, they did make a good faith effort looking at all alternatives. So that was just above and beyond what was analyzed in, in, in the environmental report. As far as some of the details, I, you know, I've, I haven't seen this response, so I can't, I can barely even read it, so <laughs> I, I need to take, take time. But I, I think the, the staff stands behind the uh, adequacy of the EIR, and, and that's what our position would be. Mr. Wells, do you have anything further you want to, or do you have a question? One question for uh, Mike while he's up there. Um, Mr. Wells said that they are currently out of compliance with their existing special use permit are they we have no violations on, on that site they did uh did submit a bid because uh, they they didn't i'm assuming they didn't know that the appeal was coming at the time they that window they they thought by this time they would have had a valid permit not being held up with the appeal they were not the successful builder we did not go with them so and who and then one other thing i just did want to talk about the number of tricks trips in the EIR it does specifically talk here uh, one comment was that it didn't include the oil trucks it didn't include the agri yes table 3.165 talks about the trips it includes oil trucks it includes uh, the virgin aggregate it includes new asphalt it includes plant employees even their personal trucks it, 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 and, and, and vehicles so it's all included in the environmental report Can I ask you one more question who's monitoring the special use permit in RMA, whose job is that? Oh, it'd, be, it'd be our branch, it'd be the plan, Economic Development and Planning Branch. Okay, well I'm thinking it's probably Dennis Lee and I'm looking for Dennis is here, yes. <laughs> so, so Dennis is the person that's in charge of monitoring this special That would be, co yeah, it, it, and it's a combination because planning department as well has um, use permits and, and things, but yes, they, okay. they're, they're, the, they're the face of uh, code compliance. And Dennis, is there any uh, compliance issues that you're aware of? I've been out to the site several times. I saw no obvious or overt uh, 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 issues with the temporary use permit that was out there. There's always some paper or some other things blowing around, but I saw no overt issues there at that time. Thanks. That's all okay. I had, Mr. Sure. Sure. One question I'll just ask Dennis while you're up here, just because I like hearing Dennis talk. Um, <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> hey, Dennis, um, I, I would assume this is going to be kind of like uh, the majority of other code issues in the county. We, we are not uh, staffed to the level to where we can proactively be driving throughout the county and be looking for code violations, whether they're building or permit violations. But if there is a complaint or a, a neighbor uh, does uh, feel that there's going to be or that there is a violation of the special use permit, um, that's when you would respond, correct? So we have responded um, to those complaints. Yes, very, okay. very much. All right. So. so if there are issues, should this be approved, you will be responsible in making sure that they are in compliance. Uh, we certainly will, and oftentimes the complaints are unfounded. Okay. Thank you. I have a, I have a question for him. Sure. Go ahead, <laughs> Dennis. We've already talked about them being out of compliance on the temporary. Do you have any record of that when we have proof 
that they are out of compliance when they advertise? I, I've never received it, Mr. Wells. I've received several comments from you concerning a grinding plant or some pile of uh, 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 concrete and what have you at the oh a Road 60 site. And, and, we're, and we're talking about this site. Right, I, I, well, that's the only complaints I've received from you concerning that. So I have to find it and complain to you whenever they bid a job through the RMA and they're not specced as a commercial plant. I've not received any complaints for that particular site. But from I, you. I'm the one that has to point it out to the county. Who, who uh, your monitor? I, I do not have a monitoring program where I go by the sites on a regular basis. I would love to have the staff to do so, but it currently I'm not staffed at that. So we have no nothing in in place to monitor the temporary net or a permanent. We have been out on complaints that we have received. If we do go by sites and see that it is obviously out of compliance, then we do make a stop at that site and attempt to bring that site into compliance. Who has to bring that uh, to light? The contractor? Oftentimes it's our inspectors out in the field. They are neighbors who give us a call. All the neighbors within 300 feet of this have received this. They know what the complaints are. They know what the issues are, and we're awaiting their calls. I have a code hotline where they can call in anonymously. Uh, and to date, I've not received any calls from that plant specifically on a code-related issue. Now, planning may have received them during these appeals and what have you. I have not received them. Okay. I would just like to say that <clears throat> what, what it, we appear to have here is that we, we don't have physical complaints or code violations with the activities going on. What, what Mr. Wells was talking about, a competition and, and doing selling and advertising, Dennis wouldn't be aware of, of, of that. We, we, and we haven't received any complaints about ongoing processes at the site. However, we have been aware of competitors concerned about bids and, and, and those things. The, the county has not chosen any bids with them. They, they kind of shot the, the lead here to try to get out in front of this. They assumed there was no, uh, assuming there was no appeal on this past one. We, they weren't the low bidder. <clears throat> so in the future, if, this temp if they're not hindered by the temporary use permit that, that restricted them from that, there won't be a need to um, monitor them because they have a use permit. So they, they assumed that they were going to get their permit and they were going to be able to get publicly. Is I, that I, what you're saying? I'm, I w I'm, this is an assumption that the applicants are here. I don't know what date they said submitted that bid. The, the permit was approved in May. I, I don't know what, what date they filled that out and what date they submitted. But nevertheless, we, they're not we the low bidder. We have violations in 2012. Again, competitors have complained that there's been competition, and uh, and, and and they're they're, they're held with restrictions. We're n we're not aware of any bids that have gone through that have well, been sold I, I just through that. I want to know what the consequences are for stepping over the line. You have a, you have a set of rules here, and the rules have been violated. Mr. Wells, I think I think I think uh, I think it's, we've. Follow your, your your rationale here, so I don't think there's anything new reason, reason to beat it to death. Uh, I think what was stated was when they when the appeal was grant, when they when they were, it was granted to them to do the special use permit by the special by the uh, planning commission, unless or until there was an appeal, they were of the opinion they were going to actually have the the permission because it was granted to them, and so they in the meantime submitted a, a bid which they were which was not awarded to them and then you've also report, report reported back issues back in 2013 which has already come before this board under their special use permit and I remember that was handled at that time there was advertising they did not recognize that they were not supposed to be advertising they, they submitted they told the board they had not actually done any sales even though they had advertised at that time I noticed that one of the letters you have here talks about uh, listing the site, but when I read further in the letter, it says it talks about sales being from Avenal. There's no indication of sales or anything being taking place from the Visalia plant. Uh, anyway, so I think we we got your your point. Uh, you're, you're 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 raising the question about how closely these things are monitored. If they don't, if they're not, and I can tell you that if they violate the special use permit, 
there are a range of things that can be done by the county, bring them into compliance, require them to, to, to we, the, the special use permit can be withdrawn. Um, if it's, if it's back in 2012 when we showed. Can you, Ms. can you use the microphone? Can you use the microphone there because we are being recorded. Uh, so in 2012 when we showed the evidence that they were in violation, what was the consequence? Well, they quit because it, at the time they didn't understand they weren't supposed to do that. But we're really not talking about that today. We're really talking about what is the issue going forward. That was back in 2012. The issue which is really pertinent today in my mind are, are where, where are we today? The, the special use permit application itself and going forward is what we're really talking about. Okay. okay. So uh, in other words, even the 2015 bid they were assuming that they would have had the permit by then and would have had it covered. And they would have, but for your appeal. Okay. okay. Now, at this time, we're going to open the public hearing. So anyone wishing to address the board on this matter? Mr. Chair, before you open the public hearing, I just want to make sure that I am fully uh, transparent in disclosing that I did meet with uh, David Cruz um, a few weeks ago. Um, and uh, that did not affect uh, or have any impact on my decision today. I'm, uh, as many of you know, and everybody in the public seems to know as well, that I'm willing to meet with anybody, anytime, anyplace. So I just want to make that known. If you're going to make the disclosure, I was going to wait until after the public hearing, but I can do that myself. I have met with both Mr. Wells and with Mr. And with, and with the, uh, the, the, the uh, I'm sorry, the <laughs> Papage Company representative, uh, Dave Cruz. So I've met with both of them. Again, my decision will be made upon the information brought to us today and submitted by the staff report, the EIR, and the public hearing, which we're about to conduct. Uh, I don't know if anybody else has any disclosures they need to make at this time. Nope. If not, all right. We will open the public hearing. Those who are here to speak in favor of the project or at this time are invited to come forward to give us your name and address. Do you have a reference, Chair? No, either, either the microphone. Good morning. Thank you very much, Chair, Supervisors, Mike Durkee on behalf of Pappage Construction. I'll keep it very brief. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. I'm not sure if the clock is running against us, as I believe we would have equal rights to present our side, but we actually don't need them. Uh, we want to thank staff publicly for the excellent job they've done. I think you'll find for any asphalt plant in this county, more thorough work has been done on this project, a more detailed environmental impact report, more thorough mitigation measures and conditions of approval that my client has willingly agreed to. Uh, I have with me uh, today all of the representatives that you've seen in the past, Mr. Pappage, uh, Mr. Cruces, uh, Mr. Uh, Brian Bown is all here with us today. Um, we can address anything raised by Mr. Wells if you prefer. Clearly the bid that went out on June 11th was as uh, the chair said was assuming a valid permit, but even there's language that is omitted from the slide that said this is contingent upon us having a valid permit. So we have not broken the law. We have not violated any of the rules. We look forward to being a successful business in your county, bringing revenue and jobs to the county and ourselves profiting as well. So happy to answer any questions that you may have. Any questions by board members? No. Not at this time, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Anybody else wishing to speak in favor of the project? All right. Anyone who wishes to speak in opposition? Good morning, sir. Good morning. My name is Mitch Brown. My business is at 14200 Road 284 in Porterville. I operate six mine sites, one asphalt plant, a rock cushion plant here in Tulare County. When submitting information to Tulare County when permitting my facilities, I've always been truthful and presented all the information for each permit and special use permit. I have reviewed the documents of the Pappage permit and am appalled by the inaccuracies and the information that was submitted for the special use permit. As well as Mr. Wells has presented, I hope you guys read that very well before making a decision. Tulare County currently has four <clears throat> permitted asphalt plants and all three of these plants are located at the source of the rock. These plants uh, permitted are running at about 25 to 30% capacity right now. And one of the sites is idle due to lack of market demand. 
the existing f facilities are capable of meeting de the demand of Tulare County and then some. So therefore the, I, I'll finish up and then I'll go back to this. The proposed permit is, if granted, will take away business from the other plants in Tulare County. It will also add undue emissions, NOx and CO already polluted, already polluting our San Joaquin Valley due to the additional truck trips required to transport the material to the site. At the Planning Commission held on May 27, 2015, David Cruz stated that by approving this permit today and the community would benefit by lower cost con construction costs and by having the asphalt <coughs> plant closer to the projects. This is in fact not true if you were to look at the bid submitted for Tulare County for the material that their costs are higher. Thank you for doing that. More, like, more than likely due to the fact that the material has to be hauled in from a plant from an aggregate source about 25 miles away. Mr. Cruz also stated that the project would bring sales tax revenue to the county. The sales tax income <clears throat> will not change because it will only redistribute the existing asphalt plants to the Papage plant because we already are underutilized now. As one of the original members of the group opposed the public staging area, it was that was granted to Papage, it was my understanding that those of us in the group would be informed of any changes to the permit. Tulare County RMA failed to notify myself and others that address their concerns that addressed their concerns to the board in June 2013. This group also had several meetings directly with uh, RMA following the presenta presentation to you, the Board of Supervisors. I would like to uh, recommend to the Board of Supervisors that unanimously appeal the, to unanimously appeal the permit, uh, PSP 14041, due to the lack of notification of interested parties, as well as the inaccuracies in the permit and documents. Can I go on and finish up? Thank you. And I would be glad to answer any other questions. Uh, my phone number is uh, 781-6389. My office phone, my cell phone is 333-2994. And I would be glad to answer any questions after this. Couple things, um, I wanna address the sales to cartmeal or to the, out of this plant. They did take, I am actually working with um, Tykert and there were truckloads of material delivered. It was class two sub base material in June to cart mill and I was not, my plant was not utilized. So I'm just concerned that it coming from a Smara, you know, we, we pay you guys about 15 to $20,000 a year, I know $40,000 a year for all of our Smara mines and stuff like that and that material was taken from their facility and transported to Cartmill, which is against your temporary operating permit. That is one of the things that I have a problem with. Um, you know, just, and by the way, I just wanna make sure that I understand the permit. This permit is just for an asphalt plant. It doesn't mention crushing, screening, stockpiling it says wrap will be used they must be going to process the wrap off-site and be moved into this so where's the trucking allowed for that I think those are one of my concerns that are the sales going to be from this just an asphalt plant and just asphalt that's the way the permit reads um, the other thing that they are going to they are getting granted an eight thousand ton a day permit i want you to take i would like you to look at that if you take the in and out loads of eight thousand tons a day at 25 tons to the load calculate that out on your own when you have a little time take the stuff that wells put together and the eir it's a truckload every 30 seconds leaving and entering that plant if it all happens in one day and which can you guys are uh, here to grant a permit for a truckload the 8,000 tons a day it's not you know it's not broken up it's it's the ability so please look at that and take a great concern in the traffic study that was done and you know the second thing is that I think it's your decision to at least take another look or appeal this today but I'm kind of curious the 
public hearing says request from resource management to deny the appeal <laughs> filed by Houston. I mean, are they already making up your mind today for you? You got to deny it. I'm just well, just was can, a little I can curious. Respond to that very quickly, and that is that um, a number of years ago, this board asked our staff to make a recommendation to okay. us. We are, the, we are the ones who make the final decisions, Thank but you. we've asked them to make a recommendation, what they believe the, the facts to be and what they believe the, the proper outcome should be, but this board will make the final decision. Okay. okay. Do you have any questions for me? Questions. Anybody? Love to answer. Um, Thank you, Mr. Brown. Again, please take a good, long, hard look at the other facts in this case and just maybe it's worth looking at. Anyone else wishing to uh, speak this morning? Uh, all right, if not, we, you do, oh, I'm sorry, excuse me. Good morning, my name is Sammy Dusen. address is 14200 Road 284 in Porterville. Um, I am an employee at Porterville Rock and Recycle. I am responsible for all the mine site reporting that we do both to the county and to the Office of Mine and Reclamation every year, as well as, as along with um, monitoring our special use permits that we have with the county and making sure that everything operates smoothly within those. Um, we have annual inspections from the Tulare County RMA on our mine sites. I don't remember one on a public use permit. So unless there's somebody calling and saying that we're violating something, there's never any real monitoring of those special use permits. Um, what I'm asking today is who's going to monitor this special use permit? Is it only going to be monitored when we call with a violation, that they're in violation, that they're doing something they're not supposed to do? Who's going to monitor the traffic? The Department of Transportation recommends how many trucks per hour should go through. But is there anybody policing that? Is there anybody policing the route? They say the trucks are supposed to use such and such route, but what's going to stop them from using another route and put undue stress on other roads in our county? Who's going to audit their books to make sure that the county of Tulare is getting their fair share of the tonnage that they report? You know, we've started out um, on my computer at work. There's a weekly reminder to check the Board of Supervisors' agendas just to make sure that there's not something that's going to affect our business that we... We don't get the Visaya Times Delta. Maybe there was something publicized in there that we didn't get. So it's my job to monitor the Board of Supervisors' agendas to make sure that there's something that's not going to be before you that's going to affect our business in some way. Now I'm going to start monitoring the Planning Commission meetings, too, I found out. So that's one more thing I've got to put on my job. So some other things I'd like to, to bring forth to you, too, is I've got a copy of the package that was taken to the Planning Commission. And along with this is the resolution of the permit. And I'd like to bring out that in the first paragraph of the resolution, it says, item three, to conduct retail commercial sales of asphalt. It doesn't say class two base, doesn't say sand, doesn't say rock, anything else. This resolution is for the sales of asphalt only. So going back to the county bids and the material to Tykert, they were in violation of this because that wasn't asphalt that they were selling. I'd also like to say that um, the nice map where the gentleman drove, drove about, wrote with a red pen on the landscaping that's going to go on around that thing, that wasn't part of this map. I can show you the map in here, but it wasn't part of the map that was done for the Planning Commission. That came about after this appeal was filed. One more thing is that the... Um, the land or the sorry the additional things that they were going to pay for to the community again that came up after this appeal it was in this document that they were going to pay for it it all came up after the appeal to make it look like a rosier picture to the Tulare County that's all I have to say do you guys have any questions for me questions no. nope. thank you anyone else wishing to address this this morning Mr. Chair, only if... Name uh, again. Name, well, oh, I apologize. Report. Mike Durkee, on behalf of Pathic Construction, only if there are any questions remaining that you'd like answers to. Question? No. Thank you, sir. Uh, this will conclude the uh, public hearing, and um, we have this matter...
uh, on for closed session. And since we've had new information presented to us, I would like to go back into closed session and then meet with our council on this matter this time. Board is uh, back in session after having consulted with our council, and uh, at this point in time, uh, what is the pleasure of the board? I'd like to make a motion to attentively deny the appeal and direct staff to bring back uh, written findings next meeting. Uh, which will be two weeks from today. Two weeks from today. We have no meeting next week. And those findings will address the issues that were brought up uh, today by the appellant. Correct. Okay, with, with that, I can second the, uh, the motion. Any further discussion or comments? Motion by Supervisor Sheeta, seconded by Supervisor Vanderpool. Please cast your votes, and the votes are unanimous, so we'll be back here in two weeks. Public hearing is closed. The, uh, there will be the ability of anybody who shows up at that meeting to speak to the findings that are presented by the staff after, the, after this hearing. Uh, we have no further matters from our general session. We do have... One item of closed session, I believe. Is that right, Council? Uh, Mr. Chairman, we do have some items for closed session. We have remaining B and E, and off is F and G of the remaining items. All right, very well. Thank you. Mitchell? Uh, you uh, Michelle? Uh, Michelle, do you want the uh, jeans? <laughs> and there will be no announcements out. Oh, no,